I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Holes podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. Hello, Edward. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little, uh, little jacked up today. Yeah, for what? I don't know. I life, just, uh, life. No, you know, well, my wife took a sick day today, and was I was not expecting it. So I had, like, all kinds of, like, I had a low-key, kind of, like, chill day, because mm-hmm. I was off. Yeah. And then she's fucking in the apartment all day. Isn't that weird how that fucks up the whole rhythm? Oh, God. It's like when you're, I remember when I was, I used to ditch school a lot. <laughs> when I lived in Vegas as a kid. They allowed you to, they didn't call your house when you missed school. Oh. I don't know how they got away with that. But this was like 1993. Oh, you know what? I, I think my, I don't think, yeah, I don't think they called my house either. So I would do this thing where my parents had split up for a while and it was just me living with my mom. My brother and sister got sent to live somewhere else. So I would wait for my mom to go to work. So I'd have to leave her. It was, I had to take a bus. Mm-hmm. So I'd act like I was going to the bus. And my mom would walk out, and mm-hmm. then I'd go around the corner, hop my own fence, and I would hide in his shed. <laughs> and one time I did that, and she didn't go in right away. So, <laughs> so just, I'm out in that shed for like because four now hours. you risk, and even leaving the shed, now you risk getting spotted. Oh yeah, so I got to stay in the shed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even like just leave. Oh, it was yeah, fucked. No, 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 I was yeah. in there for four hours. Oh, dude. I think at the time we had a dog and the dog kept running in there. Like, <laughs> get out of the shit. <laughs> Luckily, my mom never paid attention to the dog. because That's they, like dude, a bad sitcom scenario. <laughs> she would have found me. <laughs> but I feel like that whenever I have a whole day. I, okay, but what it is during the day, what is happening? Well, here's the thing. So you have an office. We don't have an office. Uh, We're in a one bedroom. So like any kind of like computer stuff that I need to do. Computer stuff. Yeah. I have computer stuff that I need to do. <laughs> Fucking, I just sound, I just went, I just sound 25 years older than I am. Hey, I had a bunch of computer stuff to do. But like, so, but I'm in the, like my little office is in the bedroom. So she's taking a sick day. She's sleeping. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to move all my shit. And I'm sitting like on the couch with it. Like, it's just. Yeah, that's not, you know, conducive. I can't, can't find it. You could jerk it. Can't, that, can't well, jerk see, that's the thing. I was waiting for you to just get to that part. Because <laughs> that's what you're really saying. That's what I'm saying. Here's here's what's crazy. So we're having they're they're working on the brick, the masonry of our building. So we live on the second floor. So the there's these guys that are just it's been six months. These guys have been like uh, pointing. You know what that is pointing no. the bricks. So they like you know over time the bricks get like rounded. So that they have to point them and re oh and restructure them re, basically like plaster them in there and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So they're doing that on the whole building. Jeez. But their like landing, their like staging area, is right outside my window. For half a year already, dude. For like six months, it's crazy. So it's wild. Like sometimes, like during a day, you know, if, I, if I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna like jerk off. You have a need for speed. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got I gotta expel the demons. I you all, of sudden, sure. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, in the gang isn't looking through your window. <laughs> yeah, dude. All that of a sudden, I just hear a bunch of like four dudes like talking Spanish. Yeah, and I'm of just course. Like, ah, God. Damn it. Screaming at each other. Yeah, I'm just like turning the porn up really loud. It's so. <laughs> it's, I love that. He's turning the volume up louder. <laughs> it's just really just. It's, it's not good. It's not good. It's messing me up. So, okay. I'm trying to figure out. I used to call in sick a lot. <laughs> I'm a, I used to be a call in sick kind of guy. Um, I don't do that anymore. I haven't done that in probably over a decade, but I remember. I had a guy call that we had just got back from uh, Paris. <laughs> I just did not want to come in, but I was like, I'll work from home. This is before that was a thing. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, can you have you come in? I've had numerous bosses ask me to come in because like I was sick too land? much. Oh, you were sick too Cause much. Because I, I was like, oh, you know, interesting. I had one guy try to check up on my PTO. See, here's the thing, right? To me, those are fucking those are my days. Yeah, like, leave me alone. Yeah. Leave me I, alone. I am owed those days. Like, I look at this, like, I look at every job like I'm like a union guy. You should. Guy. As you should. Yeah. Because that's that's why this show to me has been a, a place for me to say these things because I come from an office, like a working class office background, mm-hmm. like how my mother was. My mm-hmm. mother was always offices, like mm-hmm. not great jobs, but working class level office jobs, so like entry level kind of shit. Yeah. So there's no 
union for most of those jobs. No. So you don't, you know, you, you're at the mercy of whoever your bullshit leader is when you're that like that. So if they don't think that, if they need you in the office, because yeah. they're assholes, or you are taking too much time. But if you have the allotted time, yeah. there's no issue. Right. But it's hard for an office person, unless there's an official count, they're looked, they're frowned upon when they take. See, union guys were never. No one was ever mad about a union guy taking his day, right? Because he knew it was his day, yeah. And he, even if, if he had thirty days, he'd been there long enough, and he'd earned thirty days. Offices, no matter how long you've been there, people would look at you sideways. Oh, Maybe not now because work life balance, but they, they guilt, guilt you. you about taking days, yeah. taking those days. Like, dude, those are your days. Even my wife today, she's like, oh, I don't know, what I'm gonna. T-. I'm like. You got it, these are your There's days. There's a lot of guilt on sick day. I'm like day. talking around and taking a sick day, and then I'm like five hours later, I'm like, what the what, fuck what did I, I do? Yeah, it's like <laughs> typical Ed McGowan shit. Went in. <laughs> you talking, went in. This is sharing way too much info, <laughs> fucking yourself in the long run. <laughs> it's like the times you're supposed to speak up, you're doing something else. <laughs> Just keep yeah, like your head I, in the computer. I just couldn't help myself. I was just like, no, that's your days. You take yeah. your days. And then I'm yeah, like, and you're a high yeah. horse. Now I'm like sitting in the living room with like my, all my computer gear in my lap. And I'm just like, stand this. on an Apple box. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy fucking Hoffit, whatever. What's his name? Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> Hey, Jimmy Hoffman, what are you doing over there? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. What, well, like Jimmy Hoffman was a leader like, of the like Teamsters. So I thought you were over there like, you got to get your you day. Get in there. Uh, if, a tr- if you're eating in a truck, brought in, you got to take your fucking day. I'm throwing up the window, bringing the guys in. I know, scabbing like, wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey, what do you think it is? And I got the- Handing coffee's out there, <laughs> A loser. <laughs> so you just sat at home all day pretending to work. I got a little bit of work done. Uh, yeah, it was fine. But the uh, but no, like that's my whole thing with that is that those sick days. Like I feel so adamant about. It. Like that's that's your mind. And it's so man. funny you're freelance now, so you don't even your time's your own for but, the most part. But it's even. But you can't more, get sick now because you're even, on a job time frame. But even more so, like my days are my days. And my days off are, are my days off. Yeah. Like, I don't fuck around like that. When I'm you don't have, like, a lot of days, right? You're not getting PTO from a company. You're like, on your well, own. Well, when I'm on a job and then they want to stretch the job or they want to, like, try and get a little... Oh, oh, oh that's, that's a, a negotiation, extra, though. Pull that's a, a little extra out of, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 totally. So I get, yeah. like, I get like uh, pretty fucking... The one thing I've learned being close with you the last, what, year or whatever it's been, editors really... Freelance editors really punch their own brain clock it's they know how much brain energy goes into something and it's like well that'll cost you an additional 50 bucks like they know like talking to you and what you have to go through and why you have to be so strict it's the same reason why most people who work in any kind of art form hate having to tell anyone that they know how to edit because oh. people are like, can you, you can't do a little extra of this. You can't do a little more of that. It's like it, owning a van. Dude. It, it, <laughs> it's like owning it's a van. Your actual job. And everyone like, even the companies are trying to take advantage. Every, everybody of you. wants you to wants you to help them move. You know what I mean? It's like Seriously. owning like a truck. Like, hey, dude, what are you doing this Saturday? Why? Why? Do you want to hang out or do you want to use my truck? Like, what's going on? Yeah, no, it's totally like that. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I've cut I've cut things for people, and I'm and they're like, I'm like, I'll do this, but you're not allowed to like. No re-edits. Me. Nobody, yeah, 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 no, yeah. or nobody knows that I did this for you. Like, yeah, you know, you could totally say you you cut this yourself. I'm it's not, my business, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not getting involved. So I what do you do when you got to call in sick with your with the edits? What do you say to him? Nothing. I just, nah, you just, just do it. Sometimes I like, tell I, Gina get out of the house. You're out there working sick. I had COVID and. Uh, like I took like a half a day. That's the thing about working. Like what I'm doing is like I can make up the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it fucks off my uh, it fucks up my like off time. Like well, if I have shows and stuff like that. But if I'm sick, I'm not going to the show. You know what I mean? Like when I that's, COVID, an, uh, hey, that's another thing, though. COVID allowed the sick day to be a lot more forgiving now. Yeah. You could just go. Yeah. Maybe not now because a lot. It's so funny because now all these industries, because obviously I'm very much in tune with what corporate America is doing, and they're totally trying to get things back to before COVID so they oh, can start totally. reaming your ass again. Oh, 100%. And people start bringing up COVID. They don't want to hear it. They're yeah. like, what COVID? Yeah. All this shit yeah. they've said, all the shit they did to accommodate, they have the, the amnesia they have for COVID right now is hilarious. It's funny because small businesses kind of made out okay. 
Well, they got those deals, right, from well, the government. It's, it's And it's kind of like, it depends on the business you're in. I mean, restaurants got fucking just murdered. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you're, like, a small business and you had to add an office space and now everybody's working, like, remotely, you can just get rid of your office space. Well, see, that's the problem. But like, a big corporate place. Yeah, you can't get fucked. rid of it. You yeah. still have to have, like, an HQ, all that stuff you're yeah. expected to have. Because now, especially, like, look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs built that building down there in, uh, near the World Financial Center, right? And that thing has a movie theater in it and all these restaurants. And they're all associated and relying upon Goldman Sachs having people in the office four to five days a week. That's how those businesses thrive. Mm -hmm. And those businesses pay Goldman Sachs to be in that building. Yep. So now you're not even talking about what's going on inside Goldman, which is the cafeteria and the different people that have jobs inside the building that have to be there day to day. Now they got to get you to come in. Because they're spending all this money on the building. They're spending all this money to keep it open. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. these bean counters have a, a, a toilet paper ply down to the fucking, yeah, right. down to the nugget of turd it has to wipe as far as what they're spending. Right. And they ain't going to let you not come in. It's not going to happen. Let me a sidebar on this right now because you just brought something up. How about this in these uh, corporate offices? Because I work in some corporate places uh, every now and again. The automatic toilet flush what's your thoughts on it i think it's the fucking worst all right so i there have been times where i worked five days a week in an office in uh -huh. my life and i've always worked in departments with a majority men uh-huh and those automatic toilets the I, first of all i don't know what you're doing at your house guys but you're treating <laughs> the bathroom at the job site and not the job site like construction site your office where you're making six figures like i don't like it's a it's a mission bay bathroom in san diego california and you're some homeless guy the <laughs> automatic flushers don't work these dudes walk away from it yeah. rather than push the button to get it to flush harder yeah. and they're packing it you would think these guys have never seen toilet paper before oh dude it's disgusting. Dude, now... I have to go to... I would go... I would find... Every office building I'm in now, I have this trick. Go into an office building. If they allow you to go to multiple floors, ask where HR is. That's where uh, the most women are. And those bathrooms for the men, pristine. Oh, that's... Pristine. That's so smart. So if you're ever in a building, go to the HR floor. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah. Because I go into... Uh, my dentist is in one of those buildings. Because that's what sucks. This is what people don't know. I'm a pencil pusher working class guy that dump that is the break that's a break yeah i need that 20 minutes oh yeah. i need i need to get away maybe yeah. not so much now but the five days in the office that dump was a break that's there was saying. lunch you take a nap in there i would take a nap in there pants <laughs> <laughs> down taking a nap in the handicap stall where no one can uh, see my legs yeah that's where i'm at fucking god damn it let me do it in peace these guys are ruining it. Every they're papers ever on the floor. Well, what happens on those those toilets now is you can't sit too long, or else they call somebody. No, <laughs> they call authorities. No, if you move, all of a sudden it, it flushes, flushes on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sitting it on does. It. It's, it does. It's like the. Was well, that what you were gonna say about? It? Is that the problem with That's them? That's the problem. That's my. That they, you don't like that they uh, abbreviate your work. I don't want to get. It's like the the grossest bidet. <laughs> <laughs> my ass is just getting <laughs> splashed with toilet water. Like, no, yeah. It's I mean, you. <laughs> how far are you leaning? <laughs> are you like getting up in the middle? I got a lot going on. I got a lot going on. You're doing some filing. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this my back. I'm like, I'm readjusting. I, that's right. You got to really get up from the toilet for that thing to go off. If you're static for a while, the sensor resets. And then the littlest thing, I don't know. How uh, you maybe really? I'm moving, maybe I'm getting down a little too low. I'm getting like an old, like an old like catcher. What is that? Like, You're Johnny Bench. <laughs> <laughs> the sensor. What are you, Tom Cruise? A Mission Impossible? You're like going through the fucking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> The sensor resets. Dude, my ass has gotten wet too many times for it, for it to just be. I think, one, you're going to the bathroom for too long. That's what I'm saying. If yeah. you sit in there too long. Hey, what's the top out on these these visits? 30 minutes, 40 minutes? And the oh, no. Not 20? that long. 10, 15. Oh, okay. That, you're, I think you're moving too much. I'm moving around too yeah, much? Yeah, I think you are. I yeah. think you got to really find the range. It's like the strike zone. 
Uh huh. If you go outside the strike zone, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> they're flushing on you. Uh, all right. Yes. Yeah, so well, you, you sent me a, you sent me a reel today, oh, yeah. and this is what I wanted to talk about. It was a guy, and I'm sure people have seen this because it seemed like it was pretty famous. This I don't know where this guy. It almost was set up like the way they used to set up Monday Night Raw. From the early aughts, they, you would they would cut away to the wrestlers backstage at the oh, arena because yeah, yeah. it was underneath. Like it looked it, like it was in like a it did back have, area of like an arena. It did have that setup, yeah. And it's some dude, and I thought he was a performer because he's wearing some dopey, like cowboy kind of like button down. It was like red or something. It, it he looked like some like what, what was he wearing to work that he's wearing that to quit? I don't know. Anyways, so he hands a note. He reads a note of resignation, hands it to the guy. The guy's his supervisor comes out because he says, blah, blah, I quit. The dude is freaking out. And then the guy hired a full band after he said those words on cue to play him out and basically he heckle just, the guy with the music. He had like a trombone guy. Oh, it was off. It was like a full cymbals, brass band. Yeah. It was like a brass band. Full yeah. brass band. Yeah, the, uh, the boss comes out and he goes, hey, what is this? You guys can't be It looked in like here. a setup. It did look a little maybe like a setup, like setup right? But, but the, that's uh, not the point of what I'm bringing up here. It was hilarious. It's funny, but also, I don't. I would have laughed at that in my 20s, harder than I did in my 40s, because I saw that and I thought, oh, that's really funny. And then I was kind of irritated at the guy for being clever enough to think of that, but not clever enough to f to dupe that company out of some money, or to like fuck with that guy. Right. I don't respect braggadocious shit that doesn't get me anything like the the funny is partial to me the full swing it was the swift and brutal should be i'm quitting not only going to hire this band but i'm gonna fuck his wife in front of him. like it has i want another well, thing that's the thing i mean for somebody to yeah you have to look at it in the full context though because you're looking at it as if it were you it's not yeah it's somebody who has enough money to quit a job and also hire a band <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, I have mean? I have enough like favors if I was to pull where I could do that. That's I could make that happen with favors. Yeah. But how would I do it in a way where I could come out but fully paid, on top? He paid those guys. Like that was like yeah, that was like someone who had he was quitting that job conveniently. But do you, you know think that I mean? was like, like a lottery? If that was a lottery, he did. If you if he would have said, "Hey, John did X, Y, and Z to me, and now I won the lottery." Fuck you, John. I quit. Like I needed some more backstory on why this guy was such a terrible oh, supervisor. If he won the lottery, he should have said that. That would have been. I don't think it was him winning the lottery. No, I, that's that. what. I, that's my beef, though. It's like because if it was so, if he won the lottery and he had that cheap little brass band, I was. I mean, what did you win? Well, that's Five my point, grand. though. If you're not <laughs> leaving that job for a a way better job, if you're not leaving in that way because you've come up so big. Because you've gotten out of this shitty situation, and this is your, like, fuck you. I'm not into it. Because it, all jobs suck. All jobs yeah, suck. I got the impression. Is he going to do that to the next job? Maybe it's him. He's the asshole. I think he's just a, he's like just a clown of a kid. Like, that's what I, I think this kid. Well, I don't was, respect him now, then. Oh. <laughs> if he's a clown kid, I respect no clown kid. I thought it was funny to watch, but I don't know if respect was ever involved. <laughs> I mean, I respect. Here's who I respect. I ever tell you about, did we talk about this on here? When I worked at that uh, this one restaurant and the chef came in with fake lottery tickets. No. no. Did we ever talk about no. this? No. His chef comes in, and his chef is a dick, uh, and his job sucked. But he comes in, and there are like fake lottery tickets where <clears throat> in, the ba in the batch of like six or seven or whatever, however many he had, there was one winner. Yeah. They're all fake, though. They're all fake. He goes around. He gives them, he gives them to everybody. Shitty. The bus boy gets the winner, and he. The next scene, you know, we're all like, "Oh, he, he, the chef comes." He's like, "Hey, oh, hey, I got everybody lottery tickets." And they're like, "Oh, well, yeah, that's cool. This guy's usually a dick." Uh, huh? Cool. Uh, nothing. 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 All of a sudden, you, you look over. I'm like, "Hey, where's his name?" Was Eddie? I go, "Where's Eddie at?" And I just. He's outside of the building already. <laughs> He's got his coat, his bag, and I go, I go, "Hey, what's going on?" So I run out. I go, "Hey, dude, is everything okay?" He goes. Dude, I just won a lottery. <laughs> I love how he had the wherewithal to keep it Dude, locked. Gone. He was silent, just ghosted. He was like, I ain't telling nobody. I'm walking out. But he and I were like, 
he so he he said something to me. I was like, oh shit, dude! I come back and I go, yo, fuck it, and me, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, I, yeah, I tell yeah. everybody. <laughs> and now and uh, the fucking chef, I go back in the kitchen and the chef goes, ha ha, he's a laughing, and I, and I go, he goes, ah, those were fake, and I and I go, fake. Oh, I would kill that guy. I would. Kill I that. you just lost a bus boy. <laughs> Good job, we, pal. We don't, we don't have a busboy for the day. And the chef was like, I'm like, dude, fucking the manager's going to be pissed, dude. The owner of this fucking chef was already on the way out. That chef ran after that busboy. Dude, it was, it. that was the gift. The, the, yeah, that was, was the, that was the lottery. Mock speed To out watch the this fucking chef and grovel chef to get this fucking busboy back before lunch. I hope you had to give that guy a C note. Oh, dude, it was so cool. Oh, it was so cool because it was just, he just bolted. And we were, I, and I'm like, hey, 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 you other fake tickets. Look, Eddie's quitting. <laughs> I go, everybody, come on, so watch. So everyone watching so this then guy. the walk of shame is uh, uh, the chef is the bringing him back in. Oh, it was fantastic. I, I, I think, all right, I think the reason why this stuff always strikes me in that way, like hits that chord for me, is because I always feel like people are so excited to get out of situations that they're not making the best of. I'm not saying that that boss wasn't the worst ever. Maybe that dude had every right to do that and blah, 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 blah. But I feel like more times than not, we see people showing up some romantic partner who they thought did them wrong or showing up some job that they felt like took advantage of them and then go to the next job and have to do another hire another band like this guy's just hiring bands because he's uh, the problem oh right he's yeah, the problem with yeah. the job right jobs are jobs overall good bad and different they're not all too far off some are absolutely awful and some are unbelievable and a lot of them are just in the middle of terrible they're just okay it's a job yeah you know what i mean yeah, what are you yeah, gonna do yeah. but i think people are so brutal as individuals that they refuse to be accountable and when i see shit like that i think if he's an asshole enough to figure out how to hire a band, I could see him being the problem at work. Oh, sure. Sure. So that made me hate him more than the oh, man. Oh, Because yeah. you know what? And people watching, that bothers me too because it gives the impression to the viewer, oh, look at a man taking the man down. That's not the man. No. This is a fucking middle manager who's just an asshole who's dealing with this guy who's also an asshole, yeah. who's doing an asshole thing, and that's why we're all assholes. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. No, it is an asshole move, but it's still funny. It's, yeah, hey, funny's funny. <laughs> it was funny. I'll always laugh at funny. It was funny because I did not see, because you didn't see any of the band members on camera. Like, it was shot in a way where it was like, he goes, yeah, man, I quit. And then all of a sudden, the fucking horn start. I was like, ah, oh, that's pretty good. That's a oh, pretty good Hey, thing. I just want to let anyone know, if you ever try to hire, a, if I ever have a business <laughs> and you do that, I'm putting you through a tuba. I'm going to put that, I'm no kidding. That was so disrespectful to me. That's like, all right, okay. <laughs> so great. I always put everything like, what if someone did that to me? I love, I love it. Like this whole, you see that thing and you're just like, the disrespect. <laughs> The, like it's all like you get like you like a fucking. I laugh really hard. You're like a mob I, boss. Then I go right into disrespect. <laughs> That's my balance. Oh, that's so good. Like uh, my mother in law was here this weekend and we were playing Scrabble and she has such an issue with two letter words because I play a lot of words with friends and you can use two letter words like Q I P I. Yeah. There's a lot of variations of that that don't necessarily have definitive meanings but they're legal words to use absolutely she does not like that which is fine mm -hmm. but say it before we start the game say hey would you mind if we use only you know whatever merriman dictionary words or whatever the what's the merrick what's oh, a dictionary I don't know. whatever but you know what i mean like if she doesn't want to use those words that would be fine but she didn't say that so i'm using those words i'm i'm the uneducated one out of the group so i'm doing pretty well in scrabble uh-huh and she has B for the two-letter word I use. Uh -huh. So it's me, it's my wife, myself, my father-in-law, and her playing. And she says something, and her and I start arguing. <laughs> like a full-blown really? argument. And I get quiet for five minutes, <laughs> and I go, you're all right, you know that? <laughs> we start laughing at each other. <laughs> but, like, that's me. Like, if I've, <laughs> I, I'm going to get over it, but if I don't say anything... Here's like the, I t <laughs> but here's the thing about two letter words in Scrabble, you're fucking the board. You're you're Hey, you're, I'm making it work. I'm yeah. not fucking the I'm not fucking the board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing to win. <laughs> like 
forget. Like yesterday, we took my kid F.O. Shorts for his birthday. And I did all the research. I'm a total toy nerd. Oh, right. So I'm so yeah, excited yeah. to take him there. Yeah. And they're like, okay, go to the 49th Street entrance at 10 a.m. That's usually the less crowded one. So I'm waiting there 10 minutes with my kid and my wife. We're waiting to go in. And this dickhead waves us to the front to come oh, through the front door. Oh, dude. And I should let it go. It's not crazy packed. We're getting in. It's uh -huh, fine. Uh -huh. But I got to say something, of course, because I, I go, hey, listen, I was out there for 10 minutes waiting for your back door. Like, and I look at my wife and I go, sorry, I just had to let him know. And she just she's like, OK. But I could see in her face like. You probably didn't have to do that. Yeah, yeah right, but that's right. I have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't let it go. But what's funny about that, though, is you were looking for a side. You were you were going for like a an side. Angle. An is angle. This is the angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't fuck with the angle. But it didn't work out. You're blaming that <laughs> oh, guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because why are you sending me to the front? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing by your. That's the beef. This is the overall beef. It's the fact that I've led this life where I'm playing it by your rules. Right. And I'm working my angle through your rules, and you still fuck me. That gets. But where me. did you get this information for the Everywhere, side door? Everywhere, all over the internet. All friend. over the internet. All, all right, over all FEO right. Schwartz internet. <laughs> you love blogs from like six <laughs> years toy ago. Blog, like yeah. weirdo. Back from when they were before they closed, right? <laughs> <laughs> then they closed. You're like, so it's like around '88 when Tom Hanks was swimming big inside old, the store. It's an old Tumblr. <laughs> I was there though. <laughs> Fucking motherfuckers. <laughs> uh. I don't even know if I have anything comedy related. I got, I got a, you I got was one? thinking about a bad gig. Oh, man, it was such a bad gig. It was, it, it started out, uh, so I met this, uh, it's back when I was Ooh, like, you know, let's do this. Yeah, go ahead. Let's, for the audience, come up with all the bad gig checklist. The travel. This was no travel. Okay, so the travel, the sound, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the crowd. Mm -hmm. Venue, mm -hmm. the overall setup, mm -hmm. the money, mm -hmm. the person you're working with, mm -hmm. and then your act. Would you say those are all the yeah, categories? I mean, that sounds like, yeah. All of and it. would you say if four of those are bad, any four, that would lead to a bad gig? I would say if any one of those is really, really bad. It could ruin the whole gig. Yeah, okay. totally. So go ahead. Give me the categories of this gig. Where is it striking out? All categories? No, it was one thing. Okay. There was just one thing. All right, go ahead. That just made this the was such a bad gig. I love this. Go ahead. Because it it started out like this is a great gig. So, yeah. uh, it's back when I was like standing out front of the pair. Mm -hmm. I'm selling tickets out front, um, like chatting with these these girls. I sell them tickets. They go into the show. They have a great time after the show. I'm back out front again. They're like, oh, my God, you were so great. And I was like, oh, my God, that's great. We Don't come again. No, she she goes, uh, I run a show uptown. I want to book you on it. Amazing. I was like, it's fantastic. I was like, great. So we take the info. The show turns out it's like uh, it's a subway stop from my apartment. So it's even better. Uh, I'm getting paid for a 12 minute spot, 10 minute spot, I think. Um. We get there. It's in a nice kind of hip bar setup. The whole thing. They got music before. People are like, it's like a, it's like a good age demographic. Like not too young, oh. not too old. So so far, it's hitting out of park. All right? the categories. All the check boxes are yeah, just like yeah. it's so good. Uh, the host is great. Lance Weiss is hosting. Oh yeah, fucking king. Right? Shout out Lance. Yeah, and uh, the before the show starts, they have like a little music. While people are like kind of getting their drinks and everything like that. And one of the um, it, the part of the music thing is this drummer who's like drumming along to with to like Roxanne, you know, to like comic, you know, like just hits. Right. And he's it's cool. It's mm -hmm. very cool. Like he's very good. Then the show starts and he doesn't leave his drum kit. So he's up there the whole time. He's up there the whole time. Fucking just giving rim shots and stuff. Oh. Dude. And he's behind the state. Like, he's behind where the comics are standing. You know, it's a bar show, so it's not, there's not really a stage, but, like, as a comic, you're standing in front of this drummer, so you have no idea, and he's hammered. He is, is hammered. He part, he, this was part of the gig that you didn't know about? The, no one knew about it. So no, she just other, set up a gig. She, he's a friend of hers. 
who did uh, the warm up with the drums, and then he just stayed up there. No one said anything to him. I mean, every all the comics were like, "Dude, you got to stop." But she didn't say anything to him. Like the the showrunner oh. didn't say. And she's anything a, to him. a supposed comedian or is a show no? Or... She's the girl that I talked to oh. coming to the show. She was well, I know that, but I didn't know if she no, was also she a performer or something. She knew nothing. Oh, okay. It was crazy. The interruption of like just a but it that bash in the middle. Like this timing was. Oh. <laughs> the timing was so bad. I'm like almost shaking. That makes Dude, me so upset. It was nuts. I was like, hey, buddy. You know, by the time, and I'm like third, I guess. So like, Lance kind of handled it, and like then uh, who went? Who else was up there? Oh, Kenny Warren was there. Oh, he was. <laughs> yeah, he. I, you know, I, I don't remember how everybody did, but it was. I mean, everybody was just like not. That's happy. awful. It That's like a so, prank. It was like a prank. That would be a great prank. It was like a prank if you were just like booked. All these comedians desperate for a stage time. I'm going to give you 50 bucks. Yeah, You're going to get a free drink. Oh. You're going to get 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be amazing for you. And then it's just me banging away on the drum that they're shitty punchlines. You bah, bah, not even a rim shot. Just me. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Let's do that prank for all the comics we hate. <laughs> That's an amazing. Because you're just because the feeling of building you up. Oh, and then just to ruin oh. everything. That is the genius move. She accidentally created one of the greatest pranks of all time. <laughs> Imagine 10 comics you hate on that show and oh, how my God. funny it would be to go watch them Dude. struggle with Dude. this guy banging on the drum, this drunk guy banging on the drums. It was wild. It was crazy. I, I can't even like it's I'm getting like uh, anxiety t thinking about it, just how bad he was because. The when and then when I was talking, I was like, "Hey, dude, you can't." And as I'm talking to him, he's, he's rim shot. He's I drumming thrown it. I would have. I, I was. Yeah. I was gonna thrash yeah, his yeah. drums. I just ended it early. I was like, "Fuck this! I got paid. I'm leaving." <laughs> I definitely got paid first. Yo. And I would have taken that because he can't finish the rim shot without the thing, right? I take the one oh, thing. Oh, go up behind the bar. The Good luck. Go find. I'll throw in the middle of the street. Oh, uh, like a dog. Like a oh, like a frisbee. Toy. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll fling that yeah. symbol all the way across yeah. fucking Washington Heights. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was I was fresh. That was I didn't have the like the moxie to uh, to handle that in any kind of way. Yeah, it's hard to win that one, dude. That's a non-win because he's so much louder than me. Oh, that's the, it's the mic thing. It's like yeah. the reason why we should win, right? We have the mic. If right. you can't win with the mic, <laughs> I mean, you ain't ever winning, dude. I mean, your voice <laughs> is amplified. I had this. I came out of the La Jolla Comedy Store once. And this, these two drunk middle-aged white dudes, rich, very rich. They look, you know, you just look. It's funny, too, because in, in San Diego especially and in La Jolla, rich dudes are just, like, you could just tell they're rich by the higher-end brand surfing clothes they wear. Oh, sure. <laughs> so, like Tommy Bahama or something. Like, if it's a higher-end, like, Hawaiian shirt, you're like, oh, okay, that's a rich guy. Uh-huh. Uh, so these two, like, very beach-bummy rich dudes, probably in their 40s, I'm probably in my early, early 20s, um, they're like, hey, drunk, we love your set. We love, well, we're having a party for my son's graduation. He's graduating from high school. Huge party at my house. Uh, we'll we'll pay you whatever you want. And at the time, I didn't. I was like, uh, I'll bring two comics and you pay me four hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Here's and the guy took out a hundred in cash and put a down payment. He goes, here's a hundred bucks. Wow. And this is the day before the cell phone really was like a, I mean, we yeah. used them, but yeah, right. gave him my number. I, f I expect not to hear from him. Right. Next two days, calls me, says I'm so-and-so. Set the gig up. Great. He lives in Rancho Santa Fe, which is very prominent neighborhood. You're talking like Janet Jackson lives there. I mean, you uh, name names. Okay. Uh -huh. They live there. It's uh -huh. very high end. Yeah. Uh, you got to get through like three security gates to get to where he lives. Bring my boy with me, Ray Combs Jr., Get to this guy's house, man. It's probably 150 people there. All these smoking hot 18-year-old girls and all these kids, totally spoiled kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Uh, the dad said that he had gave them a keg but didn't tell them it was O'Doul's. Oh. So they're all placebo drunk. That's fucking great. <laughs> it was genius. Oh, man. Right? So I'm like, well, where's the, where do you want to do the show, man? It's by the pool. I'm like, all right, let's go to the pool. Let's see what you got. He wants to do the show. He has this giant pool with a fucking bridge going over the pool. 
He wants us to stand on the bridge where he has a mic set up all the way across. Like, there's a, almost a whole pool across between me and the audience. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm telling you, man, I don't know if it's going to work because, I, well, honestly, it's like a, the whole area was taken with people. There was no way to move it anywhere. So we had to go through, and I honestly was not seasoned enough to know how to execute that. Right. So I just said, fuck it. We're going to roll. First two guys up really have a struggle because they're all heckling. Yeah, yeah. I remember this guy was a heckler, too, because he's a drunk. Of course, right. So now you have 150 of those dudes heckling. Ugh. So when I went up there, I just decided I was going to I was gonna try. I, I just was going to I was gonna rank on everyone. Uh. So right out of the gate, some kid says something. I just start calling this kid every name you could think of. You don't know shit. You're drinking fake beer right now. Yeah. Did you snort baby powder and you think you're high on coke too? <laughs> and all of his buddies laughed at him. And then once I start, then I started ripping on the dad's shirt. Uh, like then I just started going after everyone because I just yeah. figured that's the only way I'm gonna win. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. If I just start ripping people apart. Yeah. But that was an awful gig. That was a bad gig. It ended up going well for me. Yeah, but, but that's I'm a, I'm in a street fight. I don't want to go in there and have a street fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. That's sure, not sure. fun for me. But that's still a win though, man. It's a win because that's I just win. figured out the angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. the angle worked. If the angle works, it's a win for me. Yeah. But at the same time, like... I mean, if that FAO short door <laughs> opened, I mean, it would have been a huge Oh, win. man, we went right to the little thing, <laughs> up to the uh, life-size lion. The mother-in-law would have been letting you use two-letter words all the fucking yeah, day. Yeah, you probably would have said nothing if my angle worked. <laughs> fucking domino effect got me. <laughs> I just... that's I, I really want money like that. Oh. But you... you you gotta be a cunt when you make that kind of money. Yeah, I guess. Why do I don't you gotta know. be a cunt? I like, I get know. that I'm an asshole. I get that I can be a little prickly. But I have an ethic. Why does the ethic just disappear with people that come from money? Now, I've met people that were working class that made money, and their ethic is intact, but their kids' ethic oh, are sure. not intact. Like, yeah, the minute you come up with money, yeah, yeah. your ethic is compromised. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to figure out what that is because... We well, never had that struggle. I know the struggle is what makes you recognize. That's what gives you empathy, right? Like you, like if you wait tables, like you're like, I, I'm not gonna go in and be an asshole at a restaurant. Yes, because I've been, I've I've been, been in there. this scenario before. Yeah, 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 totally. And I think like that's the problem I have with our industry, the numerous problems. But that's the biggest one for me is that it it now is like unheard of that someone gets into comedy that doesn't come from some kind of opportunity that allows them to pursue it oh well most of the arts have been that way though dude oh i mean I you mean, think about that come on though in, that, like in the 90s but directors and stuff like that. the arts there, I stand, mean, i'm talking strictly stand-up stand-up but stand what i'm up saying didn't is used to be like that no but it wasn't really a and it's killing my relatability to other comedians but here's the thing stand-up was never a um now it's a much more popular it is because everyone in social media sees it yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um i guess that's the equivalent of how i got into it i mean I'm 42. The they call it the oversaturation area of stand up is 1991 to 93. Oh, is that what they that's say? the era? Uh -huh. uh, I mean, essentially, you know, Ray Combs. Since we brought him up last show and this show, his dad was a really famous comedian for a time in the 90s, and that's where his career took off. And and Ray was telling me that one time his dad said, "No, I'm like, you could literally get on Johnny Carson with only be doing like you've only been doing stand up six months. Wow, in the mid 80s because it was so popular. Wow." Every channel had their own stand-up show. Huh. I mean, if you look at 85 to 93, that I remember I was talking to one of the guys that used to God, oh, I'm forgetting his name. He was like a he's pretty legendary in the comedy system from the old days. David Tyrell or David Tyree. No, that's a receiver. Sorry, it's some guy named something Tyrell. I forgot his fucking first name. Anyways, he was telling me he started going on the road three months after doing stand-up. Wow. And making money. Wow. Money. Wow. He said there was like four clubs in every city. You could get some work, dude. Isn't it now crazy? it's the opposite. It's more people have access to seeing stand-up, but the work is just not there. And but the good work, I mean. But here's the other thing: the caliber of that stand up back then was like. I oh, because they're all clubbing. They're all going to clubs and working. It's not like you're you're getting up just because you have followers on some kind of yeah. app. You know, yeah. you literally get up because someone goes, "Oh, you're here for three months," and this guy, "Oh, cool, you're in. Let's mm -hmm. go." Mm -hmm. It's all, and then you're working a ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, you know, whatever, whatever, Ed. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: it is. I, I mean, what it was. I don't. I don't. 
I don't get hung up on that. It, nah, it's like it's what it is. I don't, I, I, care, I don't really anymore. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's in the cards, it's in the cards. If yeah. I'm working hard enough, I'm working hard enough. If exactly. I'm not, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do to me? You've already stuck all kinds of things through my urethra to pull out the cancer. <laughs> You've already made me poor. You've already beat the shit out of me. What are you gonna do to me? Well, yeah. Here's the thing. What are you I gonna mean, do to Eddie McGowan? Eddie yeah. McGowan can't even breathe. <laughs> yeah, dude, I had a hard time last night. <laughs> I ran out of my saline solution. <laughs> Have you ever been in a position where Eddie McGowan was out of saline solutions? <laughs> Prop. And he's shooting up fucking rubbing alcohol up there to yeah. get the job done? No. I'm fucking snort. It's sound like a bear. <laughs> Let's really quick give a shout out to James Madden for being our first guest. He was God, fantastic. Was fantastic. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, yeah. buddy. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, uh, I had a uh, job thing that I was thinking about, uh, and it's uh, like incentives. Like, oh. Yeah, because you were a sales guy, so you used yeah, to get oh, yeah. you used to get like incentives. Right? Oh man, I used to love incentives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, when I was, man. Uh, I had a sales. My first sales gig was when I was uh, selling newspapers uh, subscriptions door to door as a fourteen year old oh, kid. Man. <laughs> Have we t- we talked about that a little bit? I think no. <laughs> you had the worst jobs as a teenager. Oh, horrible jobs. Janitor, a door to door salesman. Door to door salesman as a fourteen year old kid. Selling- the only thing worse it was like Encyclopedia Britannica. You got to carry around at fourteen. Yeah, I didn't have to carry anything. All oh. I had to get was the name, and uh, I guess they would give me a check. Yeah, they used to give me a Imagine check. Now you get shot in the face for going to people's oh, house door to door. I hate when someone comes to my door. Knock on the door. I hate crazy. it. Crazy. It's I crazy. It. I'll never forget uh, knocking on a guy's door and, and like I just, you know, it's one of those things where I'm just a kid and I'm just standing there and I'm just like knocking, not really. Pay- I, I must have knocked on this guy's door for like five minutes. Like Pee Herman where he puts that, just- that hand. <laughs> <laughs> I must have knocked on this guy's door for like five minutes. Finally, he opens the door. Yo, what the fuck, man? I was just like, oh. You met was- your you from the future? <laughs> he goes, He's all hung over? <laughs> No, he got a, he's I felt so bad because he was like, I just got done working a double shift. I just laid down. What do you want, kid? <laughs> I go, do you want to buy a subscription to the Bucks County Carrier Times? <laughs> if you sign today, it's only thirteen ninety five for two months. <laughs> You probably have so many pitches in your brain. You have so many like specials you remembered. Because <laughs> it's all a rhythm. <laughs> And you just plug it into your autopilot, so it just lives in autopilot. Uh, it's like when you go to a, a rental car and you're like, so and so's phone was attached. That's all of your specials my, you my remember memories. from shitty jobs, <laughs> the janitor routine, the fucking Bucks County newspaper Get, bullshit spiel. Getting somebody ranch, an extra side of ranch. <laughs> I bet you still have like, oh, oh. Did I get that ranch. That I think I got the ranch that Dude, one time. I still, I still relive a lot of work shit. I have those dreams still. It's been uh, 20 years since I worked in a restaurant i still have those dreams that alone in itself should be worth us getting some kind of reparations from the government Choose the be- fact that we have all that ptsd from these terrible from jobs. These bad jobs yeah give me something yeah i deserve a little something a little extra oh, yeah man, that would be. give me a little skim give me uh-huh. a little taste i just want a taste Ooh. give me a taste yeah those uh what were those checks we were getting they were nice i like a little stimulus. taste yeah those Get were nice stimulus checks mm. but the thing is i got too much money on the books Oh, you didn't get a stimulus? I, of course I did, but I didn't get the amount everybody else got. Oh, I think I did. What was it? It was like 700 bucks. No, right? no, I don't want to talk about it on air. Oh. Not in, in case someone's counting my money. Cut that. Some asshole tried to say that I was doing wrong business on Meta. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know what that even means. I got a message from Facebook. We got to get off soon, but I got a message from Facebook, and it said, it was, you know, I have a fan page, and I have a regular page. Yeah. It says, someone know someone... Said that you weren't using Meta. Dude, that's a, that's a fake, right? You didn't click that, did you? No. Oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. a fake. Dude. That's, that's a fake, a hack. right? That's oh, how you get hacked. okay. Don't click any of that shit. All right, dude. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I opened it up, but I didn't click the link. Oh, okay. You yeah. opened the message. I opened. You the read message. the message. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. read the message, but the, what happens when I click the link? It some it either if you do it from it depends on the on the scams, right? So they oh. now the big scam is if you click it from your phone. I clicked something once, and my TD app, TD Bank app, oh, opened up. Oh no! I just powered down my phone real quick. I just, I just, I was like, oh, oh. no! Here's the thing: everything's a face recognition, yeah. passwords, so they can go right in. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I, my TD shit. Bank app opened, and I just powered down my phone. I really hope something didn't happen. I'm, I'm gonna check my bank stuff now. You would have seen it happen. I would hope you would. See. Would you do it from a phone or a laptop? my phone i gotta check the app would have opened 
You would have seen the app open. Well, fuck me, man. Yeah, 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 don't click that shit. You can follow me at Josh Ricardo. I got to go check my shit now. <laughs> you can go to joshricardo.com for any uh, dates. Uh, you can follow me at Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram. Like and subscribe on uh, YouTube. Click those links. Hell yeah, click, click those. those links. Click our reels. Subscribe. Like our shit. Save our shit. Do it all. Yeah, give us that. Give us that boost. All right, we'll see you guys next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holds. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.